Legend has been reborn, introducing the new Hoyo de Monterey. At Hoyo, they're about craft. From sea to soil to sunshine and rain, they obsess over their labors. With skillful hands and passionate souls, they create. They do not settle. They do not concede. They are Hoyo de Monterey, and this is their craft. Experience the uniquely handcrafted Hoyo de Monterey at HoyoCigars.com. The highly sought after Punch Rare Corojo is back for 2016. Rare Corojo is made with a dark Sumatra wrapper and fillers from Honduras, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic, giving you a powerful yet rich smoke. These highly coveted and revered cigars are only made in small quantities once a year, so get them while you can. This is a punch classic that you can't pass up. CAO has brought you iconic cigars over the years. Brasilia, Italia, La Traviata, done in a playful nature with a unique twist. Travel to the exciting world of CAO and back in just under an hour with any of the groundbreaking CAO World Blends. Test the boundaries of style with new age brands in the 95 rated Flathead. Honor the past with new classics like Pilon. Treat your palate to an array of flavors with Soul Fire and Moon Trance. At CAO, the experiences are limitless. So what's your next move? To the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogies of the Week segment. I want to start off with a cigar from one of our sponsors. This is the Azan Maduro Natural Supremo. Right from the hands of our good friend Jack Tarano. Uh, some of the cigars that he gave me when he was up last week to Rhode Island. Uh, this cigar was, was really good. I actually will, and I didn't think that I would like the larger ring gauge size. But I tell you what. This blend really works in a larger ring gauge. It was very flavorful. Had some awesome flavors. Uh, I rated it a fiver. I like that. I like that cigar. Yeah, this size is great. Uh, The regular Robusto size, I didn't like as much as this larger ring gauge. I thought this worked in a larger 58 ring gauge. This is the Azan Maduro Natural. So they make the Azan White. Maybe I haven't smoked this blend before. I think I'm confusing it because the bands are kind of similar. There's the Azan White and there's the Azan Maduro Natural, right? Yeah, and the the Maduro Natural, it's kind of an uh, antique white it has on. Yes. I like the Maduro Natural better than the Azan White so far. And, you know, uh, I was really digging it. Better in a big ring gauge. It's not, you know. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought it worked well in this in this format. They do make it in a few other sizes. I think a Toro in a. They make a Bellicoso as well. Yeah, uh, they just they they have a few more sizes in that line um, that they've added. Uh, they added last year. It's in the uh, which the Maduro Natural. That's actually my one of my favorites of of the Azan ones. Me too. Uh, yep. Yeah, I, I kind of think they have a. You you smoke the um, the Supreme, which is a five by fifty eight. Um, they have a Robusto Extra five and a half by fifty two, a Campania, which is a Bellicoso five and a half by fifty two, and the Toro Deluxe, which they added last year, six and a half by fifty six. Yeah, uh, some good stuff in that Maduro Natural line. Now there is another Duran cigar that I rated uh, even higher that I'll okay. talk about in a bit. I have a Duran cigar for you. I haven't sent you um, a very special one. And the only reason I didn't send it to you is I was uh, they gave it to me when I was down there traveling and um I had to put I put it in the humidor and just it's sitting in there, but I will get it to you. Uh it's, Okay. Yeah, so I will remember that. I think you'll like this one. Okay. I know you haven't had it, so good, good. Will back to you. What have you been smoking? Um yeah, so this week I actually gave a um I actually smoked a Roma Craft cigar and um I'm not gonna it's a Cro-Magnon. Um, it's a Petit Corona in the Cro-Magnon. I'm not going to try to say the actual Vitola name because I can't. Um, but <laughs> I'll, I'll try it. Where is it in here? I'm trying to look at your notes. Yeah, I don't P- know if I... P- P- oh, my God. <laughs> like, there are letters that shouldn't be next to letters in the English yeah. language. Muarilor? Mu- That's what I do. <laughs> Mui lor. Mui. Mui. It's M U I E. Mue. Mue. Maybe. <laughs> is it like French? Like no. Mue Where? Look at that. Mu. Is that Mue Rilor? Uh. Right. Right there. You see it. Mu. Mui Sorry, Skip. <laughs> Sorry, Skip. We're trying, Sorry. dude. We tried. We tried. Attempt. So, yeah. Cro-Magnon, yes. So, yes. Like the Cro-Magnon, 
that begins with an M. <laughs> a Pesetta, uh, whatever. But it's a 4x46 Petite Corona. Now, this cigar was only available um, in a sampler that was released last summer at IPCBR called the El Catador de las Petite Coronas. So it's uh, Petite Coronas. Um, he made Petite Coronas in all of his blends, the uh, Intemperance blends, the cro blend, and the oh, Aquitaine, and God. the Neanderthal, which... I just smoked uh, the Neanderthal right before the show. Oh, I actually I, smoked wait, it the, like two but, days ago. The Petit Corona one? Yeah. Yeah. That That's whole, the one I had. That whole Petit Corona box, so he makes all, a lot of his blends in a Petit yeah. Corona. You get two Petit Coronas in five different sizes, Will? Is it a 10-count box? Five different blends. Five, five different, different, different blends, blends, rather. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's like wet spot in my shorts, dude. Every cigar... <laughs> In that box it's is delicious. just awesome, Will. Right? I mean, Roma might, craft, oh my, oh my man. goodness, this this Crow Magnum is is potential Bell of the Ball material. Um, yeah. In that four by forty six. Um, what I liked about it is it really was everything I expected from the Crow Magnum. Um, it was, it had a little more strength and a little more body than probably mm-hmm. some of the others because you're really getting the wrapper on that thing. Um, it had those cocoa, those coffee notes, a nice black pepper note. A um, lot of body on this cigar, I'll say that. So uh, this little thing is going to deliver a ton of flavor. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some of the cro magnets I find when they age, they do lose an edge a bit. Not this um, one. But but not. I, I think this one's from the summer. Um, and it was a great cigar. I gave it a box-worthy cigar. Yeah. I wish they would release this one as a regular production. No, I agree, Will. And yeah. I bought a couple of these boxes from Mr. Jason on a smoke shop uh, in this 10-count box. And it, uh, I don't remember all the blends. There's the uh, Intemperance and Cro-Magnon. And then there's Aquitaine. the... Aquitaine. 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 Aquitaine and Neanderthal. Then, uh, yeah, I, the, which one's the Connecticut? The, there's two EC, the Intemperance EC. The Intemperance EC and the regular Intemperance. Yeah. And, and the, so there's, you get five different blends. <laughs> Two of each in petite four by forty six format, and, and I tell delicious. you what, the Connecticut's I will, the EC's I will smoke in the morning. Yep. The rest of them, if I've got like an hour before I'm going to go to bed, I'll go out in my workshop and I'll, I'll watch like a maybe half a movie or like a show, and I'll have one of these cigars. This is yeah. like the my go to box to to have to pick from when I just I don't want to go out and spend three hours or two hours in my workshop right before I go to bed it's well, late I want to go spend an hour and I want yep. to have a good these are perfect for that yep. well perfect for that what, awesome. what did you think of the Neander because I want to smoke the other Neanderthal yep. before I talked about it on the show but I'll just say this that HOXD which is the Neanderthal Unbelievable. In that, in that, um, petite, actually, in that 4x46? Well, that's the thing. I actually smoked the 4x46. Sh- no, you smoked well, the Robusto. Was it? The Robusto? Was it flat? It was, on the no, it was not flat. It was a little small. Oh, so um, you smoked the 4x46. I did four, the 4x46. Four four yeah. Yes. How was that? Delicious. Mm. Absolutely. Look, that is a, a full body cigar. Oh, yeah. All day long. Powerhouse. Like, powerhouse. I, a powerhouse. At the end of the day, um, I was sitting at work. And uh, I had just ordered lunch, so I ate lunch. And then I'm like, look, I have one guy that gave me the cigar to smoke to try Mm -hmm. out of the set. Yes. And he was like, look, you haven't tried it. You haven't tried it. You haven't tried it. Busting my balls. So I'm like, all right, guy, I'll I'll try it now. I ate. So I smoked it. Man. (sighs) I'll stop for a second. (sighs) So good, right? So good. (laughs) It is. So, so good. Um, Yes, there is that full body at the end of the day i i'll smoke very full stuff i right. like a full body cigar i like a lot of flavor i like a lot of spice i like a lot of that but i um, found there's a lot of sweetness in you that so do, do you a lot of that like, it's, to, like it's, tobacco. it's scary it's scary how it switches on you um about halfway through cigar i uh, got a little bit of a knot in my throat yeah. um but and usually at that point I'm kind of like, um, I'm a little bit done with it, but the flavors keep you going. Mm-hmm. Um, you, light notes of sweetness behind that spice. Yes. Um, really well-developed, warm, inviting smoke. Um, all in all, from start to finish, smooth, but strong, right. full. Because a lot of a lot of strong cigars get bitter, but that one doesn't. It never does. It never does. No, I it, smoked that. I actually posted a Facebook picture. I saw um, that. I, I don't really post pictures of me smoking, but if I'm smoking something that um, I had a couple of my customers ask me, "Do you carry that?" Mm-hmm. I can't carry Roma Craft. I wish I could. Um, 
of me smoking. So I posted a picture of me smoking the Neanderthal. I saw and, people asking. Uh, like, hey, I had people asking you, yeah. me like, oh, you know, I, I, I like the Cro Magnums. Do you have that? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and my response was, no, I don't carry this line, but right. you can it get it elsewhere. Gift, you can get it at yeah, Paul yeah. Joyles. You can get Joyles of Vienna mm-hmm. Sagak. Um, so when they asked me about the fullness of it, someone actually commented that mm-hmm. it was, oh, I heard this is a very, very full cigar. So my comment to that was, it's delicious. Buck up, boys. Because yeah. look, it's <laughs> like I am a 4'11 woman <laughs> smoking this cigar. At the end of the day, yeah, it gave me a little bit of a knot, but will I suffer through that to get the flavors that this cigar can bring? And yes. Yes, and it's yes. It's one of my favorite full body, you cannot full strength cigars. Stop smoking it. Yeah. And I, in between working, I still had it in my mouth. Smoking it, it is one of those cigars you will want to pick up every couple of days because you want that flavor. Yeah, I um, like it as like kind of like a nightcap. Is how I. It really is. I, it, I felt like I needed like a nap after it. it. Yeah, I did. I did. I yeah, felt like I needed. Yeah, you go to like cigar home and you're like. That is definitely my delicious. last cigar of the day. It was delicious. It was so strong. Let's I'll just go to go bed, to bed and yeah. be good yeah. and, no, and have totally dreams agree. about it in the morning, you know? It's Absolutely. Um, on the other... Oh, speaking of strong cigars, Will, have you smoked the E.P. Carrillo Short Run 2016? I have not yet. Me so I, now, I, now I was surprised at your rating on this one because of the feedback I'm getting from it. I... Bought a couple of these, and the first one I smoked, and I want to preface. I, have it. I want to preface the rating with this that um, it was really intense and really bold, and it really? caught me. It caught me off guard for an EP career. We're talking about it in the break. Yes, it caught me off guard for an EP career. Was it was just it was really high in uh, intenseness. It was uh, very bold, and it was high in the nicotine. Like I got some nicotine sickness. Really, you from got this. a little. Was uh, off and of I mean, it. we review a lot of cigars here. On the yeah. Sto- so for me to get some nicotine sickness, I mean, maybe it was me in that day. Yeah. I maybe I ate something bad coupled with this cigar. I don't know what it was, but yeah. like I didn't feel good after I smoked <laughs> it. And again, it, to your point, Brenda, like I'll, I have cigars that I know I'm going to smoke before breakfast. I have ones that I eat breakfast and then I smoke them, and then I eat lunch and then I have cigars that I smoke. But a lot of times, like I'll end my day and I'm like. Now I've had like three cigars or even two cigars. And I'm like, yep. I want to smoke something else. I want to smoke something a little fuller. Yep. And I'll make the mistake kind of like this one where yeah. it's closer to dinner time, but I haven't eaten dinner. Yeah. And I'll have the cigar. And I think yeah. that's why it hit my system the way it did. Like yeah. I went home and I just, I needed to eat. Like I need to have some sugary drinks yep. and I need to eat to, and, oh, yeah. and I felt better. So and I'm I think surprised that, with that review on that because uh, yeah, you know, so I, if I, you go back to a lot of their short runs, no, yeah. one, like they they borderline that medium, medium, medium. full light, right. you know, uh, line. Well, I but mean, to even go the, the so inch, full, the new wave and their regular short runs, I could take the, the regular short runs. I can take down for breakfast. Well, you got the inch, the inch short run, the C99s. You got a lot in that it, that kind of falls between is, that medium, medium full line, but. Not a lot in there is false I'm, in that full. full. I'm, letting the second one, I'm letting the second one that I have rest for several yeah. months before I try it again um, because it was just uh, – maybe just need some time to, like, rest. Yeah. I tell you what, though, the flavor profile in this cigar, Will, was fantastic. Um, mm. And I just think it was really – they're smoking very intense right now. I would recommend if you're going to try the cigar – um, do it after dinner. And, and the second yes. one that I smoke, I'm going to do, do it after dinner and see if I have better results with it. But it was very bold and intense. But in, again, I mean, a fiver is a good rating. Yeah. I just think I smoked it at the wrong time. Right. And I only smoked one for this review. So smoke it after dinner and let us know what well, you that's, think. Well, that's E.P. Carrillo in general. Mm-hmm. I find that a lot of people, uh, they'll look at their rappers and they'll say, oh, yeah, and, you know, like, oh, yeah, looks mild, light. medium. Yeah. Mild, me- no, m- most of their stuff is like medium plus. It was so, like Lito Gomez. Like the exactly. Lito Gomez. Don't You're like, jump oh, it looks in light. thinking yeah. you know something. Do a little research. Or ask ask, you're ask, your, now. ask yeah. your attendant. Ask right. who you're buying from, where it's going to fall for you, because something like that you need to know. So, Will, has this cigar it. gotten some high ratings? Yeah, in fact, um, and I, it, yeah, and it was my mistake. I have smoked this cigar. This is the one we got. Um, we got, we picked these up when I was up in Rhode Island. I've smoked one of them. And I agree with you. Um, I couldn't review it because I was smoking it distracting. But um, my friend Joe Schmo, that's Joe the guy's Schmo. name. That's really Joe his Schmo, name? Joe Schmo, yeah. 
<laughs> well, he's a, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's been a friend of mine on Facebook forever, right? And I actually met him last Thursday for the first time. Right? He introduced him. So, hey, I'm Joe Schmo, right? <laughs> um, he's the biggest EP. He's one of the biggest EPC fans I know, and he yeah. was raving about it. Um, as well as a couple of other people, just reviewers have been raving about. It. Now, I I kind of was I liked it. I agree, it was bolder and intense. But I also thought it was it needed. I thought it was a little young. Too. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Well, it needs time. It, like, just, it needed. And it I find Ernie's stuff is a lot like that. It needs and, time to sit. And yep. you got those from my humidor. I did. And uh, I'm yeah, just, literally just humidor. came like yeah, just like, literally came like, like just like been he, shipped like to literally you. I put them on the shelf and you were like, give me those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It might have been the same day. Yeah. Slow down. Take your time. But yeah, it was. When I got back uh, Saturday, that's when I lit it up, and it, it was like I said, it was I was kind of doing some other stuff in the garage, and I, while it was the wrong time to smoke it, um, but I just in general Ernie's stuff I find needs to sit. And I it's agree. Me, maybe. Yeah, I it's not anyone's humidor. It's, it's well, no. the Ernesto's humidor he put sit. out those cigars yeah. all needed to sit. Well, it's the same thing with the EP, uh, the La Hysteria. Yes. When I originally smoked that cigar, um, before it got raided, um, smoke the it list, now. Um, it pulled so bitter for me, and yeah. I was so let down by it because I do think EP puts out a really well blended well, cigar. Know, sometimes bitterness, it, if it's got too much humidity in it, but then it maybe it's shipped in the summer or whatever. And you expect a little of that height and pepper and something like that. You yeah. expect that. Um, but when it starts to go bitter in your mouth, it just leaves that bad taste, and you just... It, it stops you from wanting to get a second one or a third one. Mm. So it's like sometimes things like that. That is something I believe that the manufacturers should let cigar owners know that throw them in your humidor for a week or two before you put them on your right. shelf. Don't let the consumer well, but I, but grab I think consumers one, smoke need, it. Consumers need to be educated. And one of the things but I they're like to, not. So they rely well, on us we to do be advocated. I, yeah, I like, so, I like to let consumers know if you try one cigar from a particular line and you didn't like it, don't go, count it out. Yeah, go back and try it don't again. Don't count it out. Don't yeah. count it out. Well, it's, what else you been smoking? Um, this is kind of one where I went against the grain on a lot of people, but I smoked um, the Aging Room bin number one, the D minor, which is the Lancero. Yeah, and this is the one that I really liked. You really liked it. A lot of people like this one, and, and bin number one is one of my favorite lines. I, I love bin number one. It's a great line. I didn't think this one was the best size, but I thought it was a very good cigar. I thought um, it was, you know, these bin number ones have a little bit of a kick for They have some really well-aged tobacco in there. Like some, uh, they got 16-year-old tobacco in there, but they they got some kick at the end of these cigars. Um, you want to talk about strengths, but I mean, it's a great cigar. I just thought I got a little too much of the wrapper on it, and I think I liked it in a little bigger format with that. Um but it has a nice um, – one thing I like about the bigger size is a little more of a vanilla note I get on this, which I didn't really mm, get on the yes. Lancero. As no, much. I agree. But but I can see where people do like this Lancero. It's a very good Lancero. I gave it a box split. It's nice. still very Easy good. One? Most of the other ones I'd go box worthy um, for some of those other sizes. Though. I want to I want to talk about a cigar that I lit up for this segment, and this is the uh, Jake Grotto Anniversary Series. These were made at Phil Zangie's uh, factory. Whoa. And this is the Perfecto, which I don't remember the name of the size, but... P, the P555. 555, five, 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 thank you, Will. Uh -huh. These are smoking awesome right now, and it's kind of funny. When uh, Paul first got the first shipment of these cigars, he was selling them so fast that I actually, by the time I got to the shop a couple days later, I got the last box of the Perfectos. And I want to say he signed it and everything. And then when I went there and bought some cigars, Paul was behind the counter. Yeah. And he's like, he threw in one of these cigars. And he's like, Paul, these are smoking great right now. And like, I didn't have the heart to tell him that I had bought a box because I loved them so much. I'm like, yep. if you want to give me another one, I'm totally going to smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm smoking it now. And it has this, like, kind of dark, cherry, dried fruit kind of sweetness going on yeah. Uh, yeah. throughout the whole cigar. And it, it, it picks up in intensity uh, as, as you smoke the cigar. Very, very good. Yeah, I, and I know the broadleaf wrapper on there. That it something gives it that really dark, similar to that uh, that fruit profile we get from that Opus X Maduro, right? There's something in that Maduro once it ages or something that gives it like a a dark fruit, dark dried cherry, dried fruit. Kind of. It's like the it's like the Christoph GC with that like 
dry cherry yes, fruitiness dry cherry to fruit. it. Is, but, but it's got the intensity like that. It as does, well. yes. but it full, but still enjoyable. But that it's, that's fruity sweetness is there. I love it. Yeah, it's all. It's like dark. It's you know what it's like when you have. Um, and I buy them at sometimes Trader Joe's. Some of them I bought on Amazon because if you go to like Whole Foods, they're ridiculously expensive. But yeah. you can find. Uh, like dried cherries or dried fruit with chocolate over them. Yep. In a lot of specialty stores, they're like so expensive. I won't even buy them here for the studio because they're just ridiculous. But you can find them at a good price, and they're like a dried cherry and chocolate, and that's that's this cigar. What you get? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, on the total different flavor spectrum, I smoked an Espan Carreras uh, two eleven Corona. Uh, nice little smoke. I like I like um, I like this Esteban Carreras uh, 211 series. Will that's, and, that's a Connecticut. And I'm late to the game on it. I know this has probably been out for a while, right? Uh, it came out in 2011. Yeah. Yeah, it's been out for a while, but they keep getting like different sizes next door. Um, I think they first came in with a Toro, then they came with a six by sixty and a Corona. And I recently tried the Corona. The Corona's good. I prefer the Toro. This one's a fiver for me. It's a nice morning smoke. Um, I think the Toro has a lot more sweetness and a lot more of that like really pleasant kind of hay flavor to it. The Corona has those things, but it's a little more intense, and I think you lose some of those subtle flavors that you get in that lar- larger ring gauge. I would still call the Corona a fiver. It was definitely a nice smoke. I liked it, but I prefer the. La- this is another one. That I prefer the larger size, the larger ring gauge in this blend. Me too. Me too. You too on this this uh, uh Yeah, I would go with the the Toro is a six by fifteen and the torpedo is actually pretty good in that size too. Oh that blend I should say. I never had the torpedo Brenda- yeah, the torpedo. Brenda stepped out. Oh here she comes. Okay. I um, wanted to ask her a question. We're but, talking yeah, no, about I, the um Esteban Carrera's two eleven series of cigars oh, that you guys started uh yeah. you had you had one size and I was like three. I was like really there's a Connecticut in a Toro for like yep. six dollars and eighty cents or something Not like even. that. Not even. It's six. Um, the Toro starts at like six fifty. Six fifty for and a then, Toro. And then you go uh, highest they max out is like seven. Oh, and like so six fifty for a Toro in this blend is I, there's, uh, that's a great steel. value for it's Connecticut. Steel. It is. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Um, that Nicaraguan tobacco they use in that. Um, mm. You get all those flavors you're looking for. But still very mild. Yep. Um, it's very consumer driven. Yes. Where you get a lot of the people that have been coming in. I want something mild and smooth and light, but I want a lot of flavor. Yeah. And I don't want to spend. And I don't want to spend ten dollars right. yeah. a stick. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. spend. You know, I'm looking for that bargain. So the, you know, there's a few. You got the new mm-hmm. world. You got the new wave. You got, you know, this and that. But the EP Carrillo, a lot of people haven't heard of. So it's at six fifty. You know how can you go wrong at six fifty for a stick? You're gonna try it, yeah, and you're gonna like it. And you're gonna keep smoking it, and then you're gonna venture out into a couple other things. Yeah, like you said, you spend like two dollars more, and you can get into a new wave Reserva for yep. EP Carrillo, which is a, a a little bit of a different profile. I, I say this one, the two eleven is a little more kind of like rustic. Yep. And I like that because you get a little more like that tobacco kind of feel from the two eleven. Yeah. When you go spend a little extra money, you get in that new wave Reserva. I think you get a lot more sweetness. You sweetness, get a little yeah. smoother profile from the yeah. EP Korea. It's that Connecticut you're looking for. The, honestly, like I said, uh, we've been talking about EP Corolla for a little bit. Mm. Um, their new wave line satisfies a lot of different, whether you're a young smoker or just a yeah. mild smoker in general. Um, it gives you that flavor, but still with that mild smoke. It's still um, kind of, it has a lot EP, of body for a Connecticut. It and does. It, it isn't it does. high on the strength profile. Like, no. What was it Taylor gave me the, the Churchills? Those yeah. are great. Delicious smokes. Yeah. Um, great morning. Like I said, if you're looking for that 6 to $8 range, I'll show you three, four different sticks. Um, In the you're probably going to yeah. walk away with the EP New Wave at $8 because you're going to get that bang for your buck. You're going to get that good smoke, that quality Connecticut with lots of flavor. I find it really hard to review... Connecticut smokes in that price point because 
I tend to gravitate towards the three that we talked <laughs> about. So I'm like, how can I go wrong? You got Esteban you Carreras, can't. you got E.P. Carrillo, and you got the new world from, from AJ. And when you smoke those three, it's like, it's really hard to compete price-wise yeah. and flavor-wise in those. Pro like, well, like, I can almost buy a box of each of those in a specific size. And I'd have, a, I'd have, like, my morning smokes forever. And can I say something that uh, I noticed that a lot of Connecticut used to be very dominican mm. drived. Um, where it was, uh, I want Dominican, I want Ashton, I want this light Dominican right. mild cigar. Um, the Nicaraguans have been rivaling them. Yes. Where it's, uh, all of a sudden you have this mild bodied cigar, but full flavor. Flavor, You're yeah. getting all these notes and flavors and nuances. It's of like a, it's almost like a thicker... More, there's a lot more dimensions to it, it than is. those really mild Dominicans. But that's what you want with a cigar. Yeah. You want to sit there and try to think, what am I tasting? What am I tasting? I like the that. The difference like for me that. is like I can reach for those really mild Dominicans mm -hmm. before I have breakfast. And if I'm up like really early, and if I'm up safe. at six in the morning on a weekend and I want to get some work in, yep. I, I reach for those really, really mild Dominicans. And it, it's perfect for that time yep. of day. Coffee. Six o'clock in the morning, yeah. I'm up before everyone, and I'm having a cigar. If, you know, like I'm coming into work, and maybe I've had breakfast, I've had some coffee already, like I, I feel like I've already, like my palate's already like woken up, and I've already like yeah. done stuff to my palate, so I need something with a little more body to, body it. to it. That's when I reach for the Nicaraguan. Exactly. So. Will, back to you. I want to ask Brenda a question sure. before I kind of go. So... When I was over at Havana uh, that Friday night, um, I popped in the humidor and I'd heard of this cigar. I just hadn't smoked it. And I got it. It's from Esteban Carreras. It's the Bronze Cross. Bronze Cross, yeah. That cigar is it's a Sumatra blend. I got to say, that's a fabulous really cigar. Do you smoke fabulous. the double? Do you smoke the double Perfecto, Will? No, I didn't smoke the double Perfecto. Would you grab the Figurito? Oh, uh, uh, the Toro. The Toro. Yeah. The Toro, um, yeah. All great cigars. Um, that I grabbed bronze the double perfecto line? the other day when you, you were You did, working. you did. Yeah. Um, the bronze cross uh, has really taken off. Um, wow. They do, they do a couple different lines. Uh, they have um, their chupacabras, their black cross, their bronze cross. And uh, a lot of my guys went to, uh, this year their trip was to Nicaragua to the Espan Correa factory and uh, they did stay over there for a few nights and got to smoke a lot of their different scars. And a lot of the scars that they were feeding those guys were the bronze cross, the black cross, stuff like that. Oh, and my once you got to try something like that, you hear bronze cross, you're like bronze, you automatically think what? Third round are up to everything they have because a bronze is yeah. not necessarily, you're not going for gold, you got bronze. Um, don't let that name fool you because that bronze will bring in the gold every day of the week because oh. it has tons of flavor. That Nicaraguan flavor that gives you a lot of spice but a lot of still smooth, subtle notes throughout it. Um, just like they have the Esteban Carrera I carry right now, which is the 1961, which when Esteban Carrera originally um, did their blends, they did it through Aurora's factory. So La Aurora was sitting on a lot of those last nine years of uh, blends. And we reviewed some of those. And Very yeah. favorable. Yeah. That Corona good, good yeah, was a good. fabulous. Yep. And you expect that, La Aurora. You I expect like those larger it. box press ones in the other. What's the, the other? Ten, ten the Anos, Ten Anos. Yeah. Maduro. Um, that's the thing is that you, you don't expect that, you know, it's, you've got a Dominican company like La Aurora blending your cigars for your first few years. Um, we picked up a lot of their boxes and people are starting to try them and it's that medium body Cameroon wrapper with a little bit of spice and, um, light notes of cedar and stuff like that. Really well developed cigars that people are loving, yeah. and I'm going through them um, all. So you can kind of move them through the series. Of I know we're just talking art. about uh, morning cigars. I want to talk about one from uh, Duran Cigars, the Roberto P. Duran Signature Series. This is one, another one that Jack Toronio gave jealous. me. I'm jealous. I'm jealous, man. 
See, you Jack, know. when Jack visits, it's always awesome. When Jack, and Jack's such an awesome person, and he takes yeah. good cig- he drinks I got, great I got cigars like three minutes to say three hello to, to say him, and, and you how to meet him were you, briefly. and that was yeah. it, yeah. Um, but uh, Jack was here in Rhode Island, and now I smoked the Signature Series, and I like this, and some of your members yeah. have tried some of the oh, yeah. the Signature Series, and they really like it, too. I keep a good, sh- I keep a good stash of Durands in my locker. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, funny because I've because given you a lot of and the samples, it is, too. It is, and I find it in the morning, I don't have a lot time. Well, this signature series is really dialed back. And, and this one he gave me was, oh, I don't remember the size. It's, the, uh, go ahead, Will. It's that, it's the small size. It's the, uh, what is it called? The Puntica. Puntica. And I started smoking and I said, Jack, I'm like, this would be awesome in the morning with a cup of coffee. He's like, Paul, I let one of these up every morning. Yeah. And he said, mostly they distribute these in these little three packs, which is what he gave me. Yeah. They come in a little cardboard box and you get yeah, three yeah, of them. And he, I don't know if they're releasing them in, in full count boxes or if they're talking about it, um, but there's kind of a push. I, I tell you what, you got my vote to release these yeah. in a full box. This is a box worthy cigar for me to work into yeah. my morning rotation. Um, because it's short, I mean, I could almost have one of these with coffee in the morning and finish it and then move to something else and like yeah. still go get my second cup of coffee and like, yeah. cause they're, they're short, but they're full of flavor. They are. They really. And, and you know, what's funny is that, uh, you could smoke the Duran in the morning with a cup of coffee and when you're done with your cup of coffee, you can grab another Duran. Yeah. And smoke it. Yeah, it's, it and doesn't like kill your it palate. Doesn't. It doesn't. But it's it, not a kinetic, it's not a, what is, do you know it, more about like this It's like a blend? more of a natural. Yeah, it's, it's like a, is it, what is it, Will? Yes. So one thing that's um, actually really, I would say, unique about what they're doing at Duran is they are actually sourcing their own wrapper. Um, I mean, they're growing their own wrapper and then sourcing their own tobacco. I mean, sourcing tobaccos for the filler. Hmm. So in other words, you know, they are the wrapper they're growing. And, and Roberto has a plantation actually down in Ecuador. So he actually goes down to Ecuador several times a year. And, um, you know, he's, he's very involved with the rap. Now, the rapper is an Ecuadorian Habana Criollo. Um, he's got Nicaraguan yeah. binder and filler. And then there's a leaf he says is from another Latin American country. Hmm. And that's all he'll say on it. Oh, um, really? It's really good. Yeah. What's but that wrapper, is that, that, it's got that orangey, the wrapper yes. is almost like orange. It's almost that orange wrapper. It's, got, it's a very unique looking wrapper. This is a cigar, what I'll say is it really ages well. Um, you want to be patient with it is what I'll, what I'll say. I just find it, it ages – that age is the key with that cigar. Yeah, I, I throw all my – you've given me plenty of Durant's. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I smoke – I throw them all in my locker. And in the morning when I decide to pull out all 50 cigars and yeah. what do I want to smoke this morning? Yeah. What do I want to smoke? No, no, uh, you know, no. I know I can grab – a lot in his series I know right. will pair well, well with a cup of coffee or yes. something in the morning. But you still get that flavor from it. So you're very satisfied with it after. You Even if that's your only one cigar of the day, you're still satisfied with the flavor of and it. And you'll see from that, the wrapper is absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. It's got beautiful banded. Yep. It's uh, well made. I've never had any burning issues with them. Um, really tried and true. Really good. This is a great yeah, morning actually, smoke. Actually, good. the cigar the cigar I got for you um, is the Salomon in oh, the no. coffee. Nice. Jack gave it. Yeah, Jack gave us it, and it's it, like I said when I, when I was going around Florida, I just wanted to make sure that they were humidified. I haven't even um, smoked mine yet, so that will be coming up to you. Um, which I love. That they tweaked the blend with the Salomon, mm-hmm. and I love what they did with that tweak of the blend. Um, it's a beautiful uh, cigar when you see it. Awesome. Well, do you have, you have uh, my father? You talked about. Yeah. Um. You know, this is, and I have this. This is also coming your way. This is a Florida Santias Maduro. Uh, which hmm. they made a Maduro uh, for Federal Cigar. Um, last year, they released a Maduro and a Petit Robusto um, for their 94th anniversary. Uh, this year, they released um, a, um, a box press torpedo for their 95th anniversary. And this comes from our friend Derek. Um, it's it's basically what I've been told. It's a Maduro, they, they put a Maduro wrapper on top of that cigar blend, um, replacing the Sun Grown wrapper, which everyone knows on Florida Santias. My father's been known to do this. They're known to basically have a tried and true blend. They'll swap the wrapper and they tend to do a limited run of, of it for whatever reason. Um, and that's what they did. I don't think this cigar necessarily is going to blow away Florida Santias, which is, you know, it's a legendary cigar. 
it's a solid cigar. It's it's one of those cigars, and we we've talked about this, Paul. Smoke it undistracted. Yeah, is what I'll tell you. It, it's not that it's not that you need to. You'll enjoy it smoking it. Um, you know, every day, in that everyday scenario. But but when you really smoke it undistracted, there's some nice nuances with this cigar. I think it needs some, a little more time, per se. Um, I had it as a fiber right now, but I think there's some potential. Again, it's not going to top the original Florida Santillas, but the Swap It Out wrapper gives it a, a different spin on it. Um, not a cigar. It's, it's a little more kick to it than the Florida Santillas, but I'd still say it's on the upper end of medium in strength and body. Uh, so I have that one coming your way as well. Okay. Question for Will. Um, do you feel it kind of tired in the industry where they do the same – filler binder and just switch the wrapper on things do you find it like you almost smoke the same thing just a little different do you find it tiring to smoke things like that or is it just a whole new cigar to you um to me i like it when they uh, like the guy who does it really well is nick perdomo well, like he'll come out with the three wrappers options at the same time and I think you can appreciate it more because you can pick up those cigars right around the same time when they were basically shipped at the same time, and you can appreciate it a little more. I think, though, he that's what he's always done with his lines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, though, to your point, Brenda, I do get a little tired. I think they're kind of, to get a limited out, they put the wrapper on it, and, and yeah. sometimes it Just doesn't e do. Your easy way out? I, I feel it's, almost like, right. like hey, we're gonna yeah. let me a whole of, new cigar. Right. Like you're, now, you're Don Pepin. You're my father. Give me a whole new cigar. You're, I will, you're a name I will say though, the Florida Centillas. I like the the tubo, and yeah. I don't know what made the tubo the so it's, it's so really good. In the, it's rounded. That's uh, what yeah, I mean. yeah, I don't yeah. know what it is about that tubo. I don't know if you smoke the tubo yet. No, you have to try the tubo because. I gotta. I, I, smoke, I, I no, never. I you know, I, as much as it pains me to say, I've never been a huge my father fan. Um, it's kind of hit or miss for me. Either I love them or I hate them. Um, I thought the Flor de Centilles was yeah, it was good. It, it was okay. Good cigar. I smoked the Tubo though. I was like, wow, well, this is. A but that's I, the thing. So that, you, like, you for got, me, took it up a notch. I tell you what, on the last Thursday, Keith made me an awesome dirty martini, and <laughs> I had one of those Tubos. There was a guest in here, and I wanted to give him something visually appealing. I didn't know what level of cigar smoke. He was like, yeah, I like to smoke cigars, and I gave him one of those. They both smoked great. And I tell you what, the flavors I got off this cigar didn't change a lot throughout yeah. the whole cigar, but it paired really well with that dirty martini. Yeah. And that tubo, for whatever reason, stands out on the line for me. And yeah. I think it's a matter of finding your size. I don't know if they, what they did different in the tubo, yeah. but it just it hit the mark from the tubo. The other sizes, yeah, they've been yeah. they've been good. They're and, good. And on the real t uh, um, excuse me, on the retail end of it. Mm -hmm. Um, selling something like the Los Antilles, you know, you can always go back to well, 2012, one, yeah, Cigar yeah, of the Year, right. blah, 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 this and right. this and that. You know, you can always sell it on those strong points where it sells. Right. And for what it is, it's a good cigar. It is. So, but for someone like me who smokes consistently different cigars, to give me the same cigar with just a different wrapper, for no, me, I almost agree. feels like right. lately not enough. You have so much... Um, competitive market right now where you got so much different stuff coming out that you're just giving me the same cigar with a different wrapper. Right. Not good enough for me. Like, yeah, give me seems, more. So. Give me more. Unless you're just going to blow me away with some kind of awesome wrapper mm. that you've been sitting on yeah. for years. Like, I want, mm. I want, I expect more from a family like that. Like, I expect a yeah. little more. And maybe yeah. that's just me being ignorant. You, well, you're know, you putting the bar you, high. You do. Yeah. But you expect that from someone who has held, you know, in the last four years, you've had two cigar of the years. Mm. Give me something incredible, different from yeah. that, so, what you did. So I'll say this, and so, I, I, want, I want to really address Brenda's point because I think it's important. This one was actually, like I said, it's pretty good. Um, when I was talking about the Nick Perdomo, he when he his vision for the line was to have the three different rappers. But I think what you sometimes see happen is they work on these blends, and there's like A and B with the different rapper, and A becomes the regular release. B was all it wasn't bad, but wasn't as good as A. So what you tend to see happen with these B cigars is they tend to go as shop exclusives. Mm -hmm. They tend to go mm -hmm. as uh, TAA cigars, um, and they're just not. 
there's a reason why they weren't made regular production is what I'm going to say. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, this one, like I said, I'm not putting this particular cigar in this category. I think there's a lot of potential, but that's my feeling in general. Um, what I, what I see with that happen. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like you said, you get tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. I smoked you, a, a Gurkha Cellar Reserve. This is their <laughs> direct to retail uh, yeah. line for Gurkha. Um, I like the regular Cellar Reserve. I think it's a pretty good stick. Yeah. Um, especially in some of the different sizes. They make some pretty interesting What's perfecto that? Salamone sizes. What's the MSRP on that cigar? I don't, Will, what is the MSRP on the Cellar Reserve? Do you know offhand? Um, you smoked the Edition Especial. I did. I smoked the Edition Especial Hedonism. Uh, this is a pigtail um, uh, uh, head on it, and... It's kind of like looks like a Salamone almost, perfecto Salamone ish. Uh, right. This wasn't a bad cigar. The flavors were good, but it's like I kept waiting yeah. for it to do something, yeah. and it never did anything. Like it wasn't bad per se, but it was it, it so, wasn't bad at all. I mean, I, I smoked the whole thing, so I mean, it was bad, right? But yeah, it never no, like not a cheap, not a cheap cigar. Um, <laughs> I mean, so that's they're they're uh, they're positioning that as having. Um, what do you call it, 18-year-old tobacco in it. But I think that's a cigar that, that starts, I want to say, around $12. Mm. Yeah. It's not a cheap cigar by yeah. any by, by any means. Um, in fact, I'm looking at a box of uh, – I saw a box online of uh, – actually, it's not online. You only can says you have to call the store, which is actually pretty – but it was a right, 280 it's a direct store, for a box yeah. of 20. Yeah, so 280 for a box of 20. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. At, at that price point, it's, just to your point, Brendan, like it really it has yeah. to do something for me, and it it just did. I mean, again, if this was if this was a six or eight dollar cigar, like yeah, it's a good it's a good everyday that's cigar. The thing. For someone like us in the industry, where we're trying different stuff, and we yeah. need to try different stuff, we need to know keep up on everything. Um, it has to stand twelve dollars. This is the thing. Uh, for twelve dollars, it if it kind of falls a little short, but it's still good flavors, you know. That's in our wheelhouse. We're willing to work with that. Um, I feel on the retail perspective mm -hmm. of the Gurkha stuff is that the average consumer is coming and they're looking for Gurkha's general line, which is their six, eight, four, six, eight dollar right, cigars. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they don't want to buy our brick and mortar. And mm -hmm. Gurkha has essentially said to us, look, we're not going to sell you our online cigars. You're not going to make any money. You can have these brick and mortar cigars. We're going to start you at 12 higher. to 14 yeah. a stick. Yeah. And no one, I, I don't, as much as I would love to tell you that I have customers coming in looking for a $12 Gurkha. They are not. Yeah. You know, they're not going to spend the money for it. Whether it's a good cigar or not, uh, uh, you know, it's a tough sell. Mm. It will always be a tough sell because you're at that price point. You're competing with a lot of other really well known, exactly. great twelve dollar cigars. Yeah. So it just kind of falls a little short. Here's what I see happen with the Gurkhas, and and there are some good Gurkhas. So this is not a knock on them. In fact, no. Um, I, there are, and there's some good ones that are. But what I see happen with the Gurkha line in in, in the Charlotte market is, um, it tends to be they do very good events. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by very good events is when you go to the event, you walk out of that event feeling like you got a really good deal. They, they got really good swag. They have really good, uh, you know, there's, there's some level of getting free cigars. So I tend to see the, like a cigar, like, and I like the, some of the, I like the Cellar Reserve and the Maduro a lot, right? I tend to see these type of cigars go at those events. Like that's when people will buy, they stock up on two or three, but they'll spend the money there because they know they're getting all this really cool stuff. Um, and, you know, they're probably not going to buy singles of this cigar yeah. um, just because I think they're a little trained with that. Not a knock on the cigars, but I think it's a little – that's how I've seen the events go at least down here. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, and no offense, either. but you give a lot of people a lot of free stuff, you know, they're it willing works, to, yeah. uh, you know, you, you, smooth, like them, said, you was, smooth your this, market out, you know what good, I mean? This was a good smoking cigar, but again, to buy a single at $12, uh, again, you, if I'm in an event – and well, I get a discount and I get a lot of stuff with it. It's a yeah. very competitive market right absolutely. now. It's, oh, absolutely. It's at twelve dollars you are competing with some of the best of the yeah. best. You gotta stand out. So you need to step your game up really strong yeah. before you start getting into those because for a retailer point of view, uh I'm not gonna carry you at twelve dollars because right. I know you're gonna sit on my shelf and eventually I'm gonna sell you for eight or seven. And that's not enough for me. So I tell you, talking about standing out, I smoked a La Aurora Cien Años Lancero <laughs> Cameroon. This was a, 
exclusive for Burns Tobacconist. Yep, they sent those to us a while ago, yep. And I'll I tell you what, one. oh, I only had one of these. I didn't get we one. we got to get more of these because I'll tell uh, you what. Uh, this, I have an exclusive to my shop, and I still didn't get one. Oh, but this was an exclusive to another shop, in all fairness. In all yeah, fairness, Brenda, in all fairness Brenda, you give Brenda a cigar. <laughs> in all fairness, you give Brenda Will, a cigar. Will, we got to get more of these, fairness, Will. We need more. In all fairness, <laughs> Will. Sharing is caring. We learned that. Yeah. You know, I actually want to get this in your hands, Brenda. Because, I do. Um, it it is a this is a case where they did swap a wrapper out on on a cigar, and it was I think they did freaking one in it. fantastic. Well, uh, 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 wait, what what cigar did they switch that wrapper out on? Cien Anos Lancero, the, which is an Lancero. awesome cigar. If you smoke the, the Cien Anos Lancero, Lancero, yeah, awesome no, cigar. The Cameroon Lancero. It's the, it's no, the no, only no. one I've had so, by them. No, no, no. The they so they do a Cameroon, the Cameroon Lancero, Lancero, Lancero in the which is blown They away. do a Cien Anos, which they also make in a Lancero. No. But they took a Cameroon wrapper and they put it on the Cien Anos blend. Yeah, it's like oh my this god. Is a case where it worked. This is a case where it worked. It, <laughs> wet, can I can I have a moment real quick? Wet spot in my shorts is all I have to Wait, say. Wait, real this, quick, real quick. I'm, I'm not even going there. I have oh smoked. My god. I have smoked the Cameroon. Oh. I have smoked the Cameroon Lancero. I, I must smoked have smoked the a box of those Cameroon. I have yeah. smoked the San. Plenty of the San Anjos. That is yes. my signature cigar. Uh, they put these two together, Brenda. Uh, ah. Honestly, I am flabbergasted right now. I am Wait, in a, I, beside myself this, right now. This for was that my cigar. fight, Chuck Norris forum four and is a half. Is that the sweet rating. fight? Fucking oh my well, god! Excuse my language, right. but I'm sorry, but that is a cigar I need well, to smoke. these are awesome. Awesome Dave, cigars. Dave Jones, if you're listening, I'm not going to reach out to Dave because I'm going to tell him about this segment. Um, but, yeah, this is a case where it really worked well, and they did it in the Lancero. I Loved had it. it last year, and I think I did talk about it on the show. Like I thought it was Foxworthy. But I smoked another one of them around Christmas time. Oh. And I just thought this thing ele- really it did oh. elevate to Chuck Norris level. Oh my I God. couldn't believe how good it was. So awesome. Oh, my God. You got... Something like Cameron Rapper, which is a very delicate, sweetness, very delicate. See, the oh. Cameron Rapper, so delicate, very hard to pull off. I find that Cameron rooms are hit or miss. It, you, but you have, knows how to do it. You, they do. The, well, that's the thing. You have a very small window with Cameron Rapper. It's very delicate rapper. So when someone that has been blending for over 110 years, I've had the pleasure of talking to Emmanuel and Eleanor and... Uh, yeah. Going over the blends and the different um, aspects of their cigars, it's that is a company you can stand behind, and their Cameroons are amazing. I agree. That Preferito Cameroon it, is but putting amazing. That, on the San that San Anjos that we carry as an HCC yeah, exclusive. Yeah, you have an exclusive to that. Which we is have really good the San yeah. Anjos, which is um, the big Preferito. It's actually the tobaccos from 1996. It's 20 years age of tobacco on that cigar. It's a uh, Dominican Corojo filler binder wrapper. Amazing cigar. Um, so when you take something like that and you put such a delicate wrapper on it. Oh, it, and, it works. And it's because their actual uh, preferial Lancero, the Cameroon, mm-hmm. is one of your Stogie Geeks, I think, top what, Yeah, it's, eight, a, it's Oasis. Top, the H ones are Oasis it, it rated. It is. Yeah. Between that and Padron. And when you talk about putting a cigar next to a Padron, yeah, for one of the best Oasis. cigars, yeah, the Oasis, yeah. which was one of the, the your top rated cigars. It was cigars. three Padrones. It was the Preferitos Lancero. The Tatuaje, and it was Tatuaje Black, Black Label. Black, Black Label Corona, the Corona, Jar Release. Yeah. Jar Release and that cigar. Mm-hmm. So you take... That wrapper, and you throw it on the Anjos that I carry as a house exclusive. Awesome combination. It sounds like Nirvana. It. It, yeah. That's Nirvana in your mouth. It, well, yeah. it, it really could, is. So Just all around, this um, cigar was outstanding. Right? Well, you, um, what else you been smoking? Sorry, in the interest of time, I want to make sure we yeah. get through the other I'll cigars we've been it. smoking. Yeah. Um, M. Bombay, uh, Corojo Escuro in the Double Corona. Yes. Um. This is a case where size matters. Um, I've smoked the Perfecto, which I put probably in my top three of the M Bombay cigars. I've smoked it was it was wow. very full smoke. Now I smoked the Double Corona, and it was a very different smoke. This was more of a medium, um, and I was you know I was kind of surprised. It was a little more dialed back, but I found it really worked with this particular cigar. Um, if you're looking for the fuller one, I'd probably go for the 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 uh, Perfecto. But um, enjoyed this cigar a lot. Um, 
I think the Corojo Oscuro line is actually becoming um, one of my one of my favorites. Um, this is also, I thought the flavors were quite different too compared to the Perfecto. This had more of an oaky type of flavor to it, um, but enjoyable. I gave this one a box worthy. Nice. And you nice. smoked a Davidoff Nicaraguan too this week, Will? Yes, I did. Um, and this was my smoke of the week. So <laughs> I smoked, um, this is the Davidoff Nicaragua box press in the Toro. And this is, uh, you know, I'm fine with these Davidoff, these black label ones, like the Nicaragua or the Escurio. There's always a size that really stands Shines. out over the other. Yes. I found it was the Toro in this one. Um, this was a really, really good cigar. And um, I, I just thought it was it was it was a little less Davidoff esque. So I think if you're expecting that Davidoff, that classic Davidoff, you're not going to quite get it with this cigar. Um, but it's going to deliver some flavors. And this is a cigar that I felt really kicked up in strength in the last third. I was um, very surprised. While it still had all of its flavor in that thing. For the, um, for the Nicaraguan? With the, with the Davidoff Nicaragua box press, which is actually a different blend than the Davidoff Nicaragua. Yeah, because I was going to uh, say, I have, I actually carried the Nicaraguans, but I never had the box press. Yeah, it's back. a new size. And so you, really? like the Toro, so you like the Toro better than the Robusto, Will? Really? I, guess, I, guess, I mean, it's a, there's a, I would say the, the Robusto was more of a fiber, and this is a box worthy, so there's a wow. big difference. Between yeah. I haven't smoked my Toro. Uh, I have one Toro. Yeah, I haven't yeah. smoked it yet. If you want to smoke the Toro, I think you'll see, again, you know, that's what I've found with these. And I think this cigar has not reached its potential yet. But it's, it's not young, but it's really good. But I think this is going to age really good. I think maybe some of that strength will kick down a little. Um, yeah, I, I – Brenda, they actually changed the blend. They put a little more Lajero in it, and really? they put an Oscuro wrapper as opposed to a Rosado. I like so an Oscuro. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I can't wait to try the Toro. Me either. People, yeah. people have been polarized on this one. I've talked to a couple guys who <laughs> did not like it, and I talked to other guys who, like me, loved it. So it, it's very polarizing. Uh, you know what? It's, funny, I, it's funny, Will. My last cigar is a box press Toro. Yeah. And this comes from Rocky Patel. It's the 20th anniversary. You know what? Now, I smoked this in the Lancero blend. It's and fantastic. Fantastic in the Lancero blend. It's, a tr it's like a really high-rated cigar here on the Stoia Geeks. But this box press Toro, Will, is a box split in my opinion. This had some awesome flavors. It makes some really subtle changes. Did a fantastic job with this blend. Um, it just it smoked awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. I liked it in the different sizes. Not as much as the Lancero, um, but this is a really strong box, box split, and it could even go box-worthy. Uh, with a little bit of age, because those subtle changes in the flavor are just mm -hmm. awesome in the cigar. With Rocky and it's Patel, box press, so it's a little bit, yeah, yeah. The twentieth, you know, I, you know what, and you can fight me tooth and nail on that. Is that I always, I love a box press. Yeah, there's something about it. It's just so relaxing to smoke something that fits your mouth. Yes, and to relax with well, something I that is you get that you can draw. get flavors from that box press without having that. Thick ring gauge. Yeah. I like that. Um, Rocky Patel and me have had a fight over the years between flavor and consistency. Mm -hmm. And it's, you always get a f great flavor, Rocky Patel. Um, I've never actually gotten a chance to meet Rocky Patel, which he's been around, but I've never gotten to meet him. Um, I would love to applaud the man on his blends and what he does. Um, yeah, it really does. But it really, uh, amazing blends. Um, but sometimes you feel that it's just your consistency with it. I feel like I mean, that because they are such a big name in the industry that your quantity over, right. you know, does your quality of your cigars. So I end up switching out more Rocky Patels than I would like. But it leaves me almost wanting more from them. So I sit there every time with Rocky Patel and go, give me more. Give mm. me more. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? And, uh, you know, I'm hoping Rocky Patel will step up and give me more. So I yeah, can just I say, look, I, I will stand behind I your he, line. I think, I think he, in the last year, in our sponsor, so I'll say, you know, I'm not just saying this, but we've said this before. I think in the last year, year and a half, those consistency issues are really being addressed. Right addressed, now. but Big time. and and, and you know yeah. it's funny it's because you did an interview with uh, yeah with Rocky, Rocky himself yeah. uh, a few months ago and and you came into my shop and I was like did you ask him about his 
quantity versus quality. We, we did. Uh, we did. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I know, I don't want to ask him too much no, about but that. No, we did. But, he addressed and, those and issues. And that's on the thing interview. is that but I feel I that. What, I tell you what, Brenda, the new, some of the newer blends that he's yeah. been producing. Um, what a year he had last year! Unbelievable. He did with yeah. what he had the uh, the Cameroon, the Cameroon, the uh, he had the the Lajero, the, the Prohibition, the soup, yep. uh, the Super the Super Lajero, and this 20th anniversary. Yeah, and, uh, and, and he just knocks out of the park. Qu- he, yeah. he, that's the thing with Rocky. His flavor is always there. Yes, his flavor is always there. That 20th anniversary is my prediction. He, that will be Rocky's next cigar aficionado top 25 cigar. I agree. You, that's yeah. my, I agree. That's my prediction. It's, yeah. it's a great. The blend if that is Lancero outstanding. Get it's yeah. outstanding. Well, yeah. uh, that's the thing is that. Once again, on the retail retail right. aspect of it, is that you want that quality to go with your when you're asking ten, twelve dollars for your cigar. I want to be able to sell it to you and you enjoy it and be able to mm-hmm. smoke it straight through. Um, with Rocky Patel, has been hit or miss with his newer stuff. Um, decades are always a great sell. Always delights everything with the mm-hmm. Edge series. Yeah. All good. Um, but you do find those quality issues, and that becomes a drawback in Rocky Patel itself, and you don't want to see that because that's another company you stand behind but, and you say, look, this is a great smoke. But that's one of great the reasons smoke. we do the show, right, is the people who are like, uh, I don't know if I want to try another Rocky Patel cigar, and we're like, no. We've try, smoked, try it. Try them. Try them. We're, we're, we're yes. seeing it. We're really seeing the. I mean, we've been smoking a lot of them, and like I said, I'll disclaim their sponsor, but yeah. we have seen the consistency. And if we didn't, we'd be letting them know about yeah. it. Yeah, we're not. And, and I so, tell you what, I and mean, that's the thing. I, we review like eight hundred cigars a year, and I tell you what, it, Will's right. This twentieth anniversary, and there are some other lines of record tell that I really love. Yeah, and it, they I have, are I have a, a always, staple. They're a staple. They're a staple. And, yeah. But their newer stuff is. Amazing! I, I'm yeah. super impressed with that Super Lajero. In fact, I got it. Reminds me, I got to go buy more of those because I really love smoking yeah. that Super Lajero, and I love this 20th anniversary. I think Will's right. That Lancero, yeah. if it doesn't earn a spot in the top 25, in not just Cigar Aficionados list, but a lot of other people's list, awesome. I'll be shocked because yeah. that is a fantastic cigar. Yeah, and that's the thing is that that's what drives me crazy about some of these companies is that I will smoke and I'll get. Being in the industry, I get the samples. I get all that coming into me. Smoke this before you bring us in. And I smoke them. And the flavors are impeccable, amazing, um, enjoyable. Uh, A million different words I can describe the flavors of these cigars with. But at the end of the day, if you're paying that, once again, that $10, $12 cigar, if it's not smoking completely even for you people have a problem with it Mm -hmm. and they tend not to try it again and that is a miss for that industry because at the end of the day that is a great smoke you want to try it again and for a second time and a third time and a fourth time Mm -hmm. so just always keep in mind that your quality needs to be with your quantity at the end of the day because if not you end up falling short Right. And there's the next guy ready to step in and take that place. And Rocky um, Patel needs to... I think we've, we've gone through our cigars, right, Will? We yeah. have gone through them. Excellent. Beautiful. Um, I want to thank Brenda for thank coming you. here thank in you, studio. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful I love being here. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Will, thank you very much. As always, our special guest Absolutely. this evening, Brian Moussard. Yeah. Um, also Thanks. an unbanded segment. And again... Uh, if you're listening to this show, make sure you check out our other shows, Stogie Geek Shorts and Stogie Geeks News. You can find all of our shows, uh, including uh, the ability to watch us live on StogieGeeks.com. We're live every Monday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find all the latest cigar news and reviews on Cigar-Coop.com. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next time.